welcome to the session guys so as you are seeing on the screen when uh, we are on the website when you are on the website you are clicking lectures from there we are here ai for everyone master the basics we click this and uh, we have gone through module one two and three yesterday we were talking about issues ethical considerations and so on of course there are so many other things which we can talk about but um just think about the pointers very interesting pointers our friends are raising in the sessions you have to think about that and there are clips there are so much reading on the on the site which which should keep you busy so you don't have to watch everything you don't want to have to read everything you just want to select the things which you are interested in and develop your understanding around those areas as our friends have said the ai field is very broad especially the way i have uh, constructed this week it is as anton was also saying it is not like specific something like we are doing coding and everyone is working on that and it is not that it is developing an overall understanding of uh, of artificial intelligence what is happening what would be the future like those type of things so we are here module number four so when you will click this this is what is going to uh, open up so i'm going to show you a couple of clips and then we will uh, we will uh, we will talk about that and because this is the last one for this section basic basics so i hope that you will you will participate in the discussions the future with ai and ai in action so we want to really understand uh, and uh, you guys will help everyone else understand based on your experiences that what do you think what is the future of ai essentially speaking there is a question which we want to understand by the end of this module and then we have to move on to other things because we are in the mid of the week already. So the essential question which we really want to understand, guys, is that how should we prepare for the future of work? What are the things we can we can we can do? Yes, I have I have made some commentary on that. For example, statistical analysis, data analysis, these type of things, psychological understanding. Uh, human behavior uh, those type of things are definitely going to help you but you guys also need to uh, help us understand that how should we prepare for next five years what are the things we should do because think about it universities are not going to prepare us that is how it is we need to prepare ourselves because let's be honest the revision is in curriculum and all of those things and even even the mindset of the people who facilitate it is it is not very advanced as it should be generally speaking not talking about any universities generally speaking that is the so but we are in it so we should be able to uh, come up with some ideas that all right if we want to be uh, beneficial in the future these are the things which we should work on we should learn this we should learn that we should think like this any idea you can give would be beneficial at the end of this this module so i'm going to start by playing some clips and then see how we can uh, proceed the original ai researchers were very interested in games because they were extremely complex huge numbers of possible positions in games were available Yet they're simple in a certain way. They're simple in that the moves are well defined, the goals are well defined, and so you don't have to solve everything all at once. With chess, in particular, in, in the work on Deep Blue at IBM, what became apparent, what computers could do in a problem like that, uh, was bring a massive amount of uh, compute resource to do uh, deeper searches to investigate more options of, of move um, in chess uh, that than was previously possible. Watson defeating Jeopardy. So this was another crossover point in sort of the development of AI and cognitive computing. The questions that IBM was, was able to answer with Jeopardy uh, were questions that weren't simply looking up in the database and you know finding the answer somewhere. Uh, rather, it required uh, information retrieval over lots of different information resources and then the combining of these together uh, using machine learning that could arrive at answers 
that went beyond what was simply written somewhere. Now our technology is so much better and so much more advanced that we're really ready to move on and tackle much uh, more urgent problems that have this kind of ill-defined or kind of messy nature. Every industry, from oil and gas to healthcare to media and entertainment to retail, um, are just being swamped by a tsunami of unstructured data. That can be, you know, multimedia. It can be images. It can be video. It can be text. And it's really the ability to understand that data that is becoming critical. One of the most valuable applications of cognitive computing is in the health domain. Medical providers, physicians, nurses, uh, assistants face enormous challenges leveraging all of the available information that's out there. Uh, the medical literature increases by about 700,000 articles every year. And there's already millions of journal articles out there. And today's imaging technologies produce a very rich amount of information. In fact, uh, a particular scan might have 5,000 images in it. You combine the image analysis with uh, natural language understanding, and text analysis, leveraging the medical literature, leveraging the patient's medical history, the physician has got a lot more information and knowledge at their disposal to help them make the best diagnosis possible. Clearly, uh, there is this intersection of what the computer can do and you know what people are able to do that you know gives you something that's better than each of them individually. What is going to be you know truly interesting is to see what is the best way for them to have you know really symbiotic type of interaction, taking advantage of each other's strengths to collectively solve a problem. Watson it looks at another aspect of intelligence and a much more difficult aspect of intelligence, that is language. You have to be able to interpret the questions and come up with the right answers, um, no matter what the topic. So I think the ideal scenario for AI in the modern world is, is not to buy and develop a system that completely autonomously handles every aspect of a problem, but have a collaboration between machines doing what they do best and people doing what they do best. And I can imagine that combination will do better than either one by themselves. We're constantly here looking for what's the next grand challenge problem we can take on that's not just around the corner or a year away, but it's gonna take a multi-year effort. And when we get there, we'll have something that's, that's valuable for the world. Very interesting comments uh, made by the guy, especially in the end, uh, multi-year effort. Uh, and definitely, if you are looking into AI work by top uh, scientists, you will see that, uh, well, they don't disclose everything, but uh, you get an idea by their readings that what type of amazing projects they are they are working on. I would uh, really want to talk about one thing which, uh, which I find very, very interesting. Uh, in medicine, for example, the guy was giving example. Uh, all the literature on uh, on uh, published published research articles, millions of articles, he's saying, and definitely that is how it is. Uh, humanly, it is it is it is it is very tedious. If I am a scientist, medical scientist, and I am working in Jamaica, it is very difficult for me to really get a uh, uh, get, really get the time to read all the different articles published in uh, all over the world by various scientists. Uh, I can follow a couple of them, uh, the one who are famous or the one who are doing something breakthrough. And of course, if any scientist in, 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 in any part of the world do something amazing, uh, they get coverage and I will get to know also. But there are so many other things which are, which are not worthy of Nobel Prize or the top uh, top uh, reward, but they are still very exciting things. Yes. So how to get hold of those things? So th that problem is kind of, I would say that maybe solve is the wrong word, but it is it is addressed maybe by by doing this AI looking at millions of articles and it can read simultaneously in one time. It does not has to. We human beings can read one article in one time. We can't. Maybe we can read two articles if we are using one eye to read one article and second eye to read second 
second article, but like we can't read multiple articles in one time. That's not possible. But uh, but uh, AI can read and scan simultaneously. Simultaneously, that is quite quite interesting. Of course, based on the instruction, based on based on the command, based on the algorithm which we set for it. But but other things which 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 he was saying like five thousand images, image analysis, patient history, all of those things combined and it giving you a an idea, very good idea that this is what is happening. And then uh, the the human human doctor he also has his own experience and then he can look at that report and then he can analyze that that uh, what is what is what uh, same thing let me uh, give some very basic example like in a, in a in a in a in a in a in a production house uh, producing anything whatever they are producing there is a plant manager he goes there in the morning when he goes there there are a lot of lot of uh, papers on his desk giving him different type of data this machine is doing this today this machine is doing this this machine would need maintenance these many people would be there these many are not there these are the targets we may need to meet and based on as a plant manager he's just coming in the morning looking at the reports early morning like the ones i have seen they come very early like 4 35 in the morning when work is going to start at maybe eight o'clock although production does not start it it, it is 24 7 that type of production facility I'm talking about but the plant manager is coming early he's looking at those reports and then he's using now using the, looking at the, he don't he does not make his final decision on the data alone he use his own uh, analysis also his own experience his own gut feeling whatever you want to call it so he looks at it and then you know he decides that what needs to be done so for example data might forecast might tell him that next month we need 1000 products we need 1000 pens but based on his experience he would say i don't think we need 1000 let's do 800 and that is he decides for 800 on the other hand the reports might say let's do 1000 and he say no no let's do 1200 something like that yeah so because he's the plant man he has the data but he decides on his own this is what happens no, I, I'm not familiar with any company who just focus on data and whatever data is is uh, is saying they are just going to do that. That is not how. That is not how I have seen. You you would have your own experience and uh, that is also fine. But I'm just sharing my thoughts. Uh, but that data helps the person. Same way, I think these type of technologies, medical related. I gave you one example about medicine. How one doctor was telling me that uh, these apps they are pretty good pretty amazing at a at a decent cost it is just that human beings are kind of reluctant to use it because they want to talk with the doctor and everything that type of that type of that type of thing uh, uh, so just like this interaction this interaction you know you the website is there things are posted there you can uh, definitely you know think about those things and uh, look look into that but what are we trying to do how to how to how to how to how to be useful in online online environment if you ask me there is no point of online environment if there will be no discussion if there will be no exchange of idea why you guys are here if you are not going to exchange idea there is no point uh, yes you can say that you are listening listening what what is happening but uh, the the uh, the same thing is with the the same thing is with these type of tools. So the patient wants some type of interaction or maybe hope. So the 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 app is going to tell him that he will be fine, but he wants to come and he wants to listen to the doctor and the doctor saying him, you will be fine. Don't worry about it. You will be okay. Yeah, that type of thing. Yeah, just like I told you, well, even if you don't participate, you are here, so you will be fine. I will take care of your marks or something like that. Yes, so that type of hope and that type of thing is is. But can can AI can AI bring that empathy or what type of thing? They are working on it. This is what they are working on, and uh, and uh, what I think that they will be able to work on it. 
uh, even even if you want to say that tears should come from the from the ai or you know they should cry those type of things uh, or blood should come out of their vein i think all of that is possible you can put put blood in the in the thing and you can put tears but the the problem i think the problem is that uh, the real human beings the real human beings might never ex ex expect uh, accept accept uh, uh, ai like it is real they would always say well oh, well this is not real you know this is <laughs> this is this is this is not real we are real we are real yeah so that is that is the that yes anton please go ahead yeah i wanted to yeah. add this oh, oh, what is this noise sorry i wanted to comment quickly on this um, medical diagnosis yeah somebody who is diagnosed by an ai and somebody who is diagnosed by a doctor i yeah. think it's a question of um how you what what people are used to for example for elderly people it is a real problem if they don't have any interaction so oftentimes they come to see a doctor because they, they want to talk to somebody for example in finland if you think about this uh, emergency number 112 or 911 in the us uh, a lot of a lot of times about 40 percent when people call to this number not because of emergency but because they want to talk to somebody and it's usually elderly people somewhere in the countryside and the same for this ai stuff so they would use uh, the um, public health care system just to talk to somebody but for younger people for example if i take a bus i don't want to talk to a doctor i don't want to see anyone i want to just go to the system put up my diagnosis or whatever symptoms and then get a uh, diagnosis quickly and then if needed i could then book a call with a doctor or then go and see somebody so it's a question of uh time efficiency and at the same time if you find a way to engage with elderly people who want to talk to somebody as opposed to come and see uh, for real medical problem then it's a different story excellent point Anton. and thanks very much for that so guys think of think about this this is i think this is absolutely and let's come out of ai and let's have something something very basic like for example you guys um in uh, in the, the the countries on the on the top of the map uh finland uh, norway sweden these type of countries they are they are very much digi 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 digitized very much uh for example cash people are using less of cash and more of cards and those type of things but uh, think about other countries like uh, like countries like countries like countries like jamaica for example uh, so it is it is people use cards and uh, all of those things uh, they do that uh banking transactions are the the banks recently after covid 19 they because they wanted to remain relevant they opened a lot of uh, things which which people can do online and stuff but still just like anton said the older people because they are used to a particular lifestyle it is it is kind of hard for them to grasp that that you can you can uh, you can pay without without cash there is a card you can so because they will say where is the money well money is in the in the card so <laughs> so it is kind of you know it is kind of a challenge for them so all of this is very much linked with other for example some of our friends are coming from i think business background they are not coming from uh, not many but uh, uh, based on the reflection i was getting there are a couple of friends who are coming from business background and stuff like that so for example in business you are looking at management of change change management uh what are the protocols for that so you can work on that and come in ai from that side you don't have to be computer scientists to come to come in ai there are so many different ways to to come in ai so you are going to say how you will help people to uh, to bring change in terms of accommodating more and more ai in their lives yeah Yes, Pandey, please. I was, I think, referring to you. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, hi, everyone. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, I'm, I'm from a business uh, background, and this is the first time I was uh, introduced to uh, a, a very particular set of technological area, you know. So uh, I was always fascinated about, about the change, the, the pace of change we are going on. And uh, definitely, at some point, I need to understand about uh, these changes and 
uh, I thought that earlier I understand it will be much more beneficial for me to implicate those uh, those changes in any of my future work. I don't know. I, I don't think I will be, ever be a programmer or a coder. I don't think and I will be go on, going on a, that route because I have to start from a very zero. But but it's still uh, I, I can use, for example, in the sales, if I'm working in a sales, uh, there will be a lot of uh, things that will be advantages for me to uh, use AI technologies and understanding, you know, lots of things. Uh, that's why I'm in a very, like, a very early stage, but uh, now uh, uh, going through this course, lots of eye-opening things are uh, going on here, you know, so it's, it has been very beneficial. I didn't know about other group members. They are from this background. But I'm especially from a business background. I'm is, uh, I'm in my like last year. I'm going to graduate soon. So um, this course has been a, a one of the very good course for me. You know that's why I choose to join this course. And you know as we were th as as this this is the same topic for this module is that how should we prepare for the for the future of work? That is the main question which we want to answer by end of this. This, this this module which we are module number four so, yeah. so 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 you don't have to like you know it's not it's not like what i'm trying to say is that uh, learning languages and coding and algorithm yes they are important but think about it you guys uh, you will be competing with all these other guys who are coming from computer science background they have yeah. been learning about these language for maybe three years four years they have hands-on experience so how you are going to compete with them in that yes you can but it will take some time when time is the time is the thing so you have to see that what are the skills you have right now from your business background and then come into into this and you will stand out from your cohort which is doing business management and they are not thinking about these technologies and don't don't focus on ai ai is just one of one of so many things there are so many other things which which are which are which are there and look at this ronnie made this comment in the chat detecting when and where you might need an ai in your business might be a very important skill in the future because you don't want to bring ai in everything so how you can advise other people that if you bring ai in this these are the advantages these are the disadvantages now you can say that anyone can search this and find out i would argue that no Everyone cannot do that because you know to you you want to compile information together for people so people can come on that site and they can quickly do the thing. They don't have to spend time in in uh, in uh, in collecting the information because it takes time. It takes time to see different videos, read different articles, bring them together. All of these. This is a this is a long. It takes it takes effort. So maybe you want to do something like that. Uh, and other friends are giving very nice, uh, you know, uh, commentary, yeah. consultation, and those type of. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Saying I graduated from business two years ago, then I jumped into IT. Okay, very, very good. That is nothing is wrong in that. Uh, so she would have uh, once she's in in reach somewhere in IT, then she would be coming with the background knowledge of business. So that is that is that is that is good. That is good, uh, good combination. Although I, I did not plan to say this, I was trying to promote Thang that he did good. But because now Maya has said that double degree cool with the glasses, <laughs> so now I'm going to say what I what is coming in my mind. Yeah. Don't waste your time in double degrees. That is what my take is, and I can argue on that. Timing is the thing you want to. You want to come in the in the real working field as soon as 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 possible. So if you are in business, you don't don't go into IT field. Even if you are going into IT field, go part time, like in the evenings. Start working. You have yeah. one degree. Yeah. You morning is for for work. Uh, from from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. work. And after that, if you are interested in getting some other degree IT I'm, I'm I'm talking to people who are like uh, like Pandey who are coming so because you can do courses if you want to learn some language you can do some course and like double degrees looks good but uh, there are some disadvantages and why I'm saying let me tell you why I'm saying it I have double degrees 
yeah <laughs> so so i am saying it from experience but you can do what makes you makes you happy yes you want to say something yeah uh, most of the my friends like uh, some of the friends who already graduated and uh, they they try here and there uh, and uh, uh, some of their it friends are getting a very good jobs and they think that just going in and getting an it degree will give them uh, land them a, a better job and but i think in, in my opinion it's not about just having a degree it's all about having a skill set if i am from a business background if i have some some very basic niche skills on uh, let, let's say uh, any any field of uh, it by just having a skill i can have a better career i think so i don't need to go and invest in four years of my time in uh, getting another university degree because i'm already fed up with this degree you know i want to just get out of as soon as possible and uh, go work somewhere and have a practical knowledge very good very good and jonas has just posted this link please watch uh, please um, look look into this link why is artificial intelligence in business and uh, in business analytics so critical for business growth business analytics is same as data data analysis it is the same thing yes so this is the article which our friend jonas has just posted let's 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 take a point let's take some point from here and let's address the situation of pandey so for example customer service yeah customer yeah. service so pandey is coming from business background he has to service customers there is no other way he, there will be some customers how to bring ai into this so there are mm -hmm. things like chatbots. So why don't mm -hmm. people like Pandey, instead of doing the next IT degree, why don't yeah. they do a course in how to create chatbots? Yeah. Top quality yeah. chatbots. Yeah. The, the quality which even a IT student cannot really create because they did not spend that much time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in that. Work on that. Yeah. So and then you are uh, you are including you are you are you are uh, offering uh, companies that you can create chatbots for them, yes. And you come from business background and you tell them that I understand your business situation. A person who is coming from IT background, he has studied computer sciences. Very few courses he has taken in business. So you should be good in your business. In your business discipline, you should know about marketing and sales and promotion and presentation everything which you which you know people like Pandey know that and now include chatbots in that and you have you have uh, you have but that is one just one simple thing it's it's more complicated than that yes Anton please go ahead yeah I wanted to comment on what uh, Arjun is it pronounced so, yeah yeah that's uh, you need you need a degree in Finland so this is I can tell you straight away so I have multiple degrees. I have uh, uh, I have background in biology. I have background in business. I'm finishing my uh, I, uh, IT thing, so I'll be graduating next year. And I can tell you anyway. I've been I've been living in Finland for the last 13 years. You need to have a degree if you want to land a good job. If you don't want to be some kind of low-profile software engineer, you need to have a degree. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of IT people here. Uh, some of them don't have a degree, but they are so freaking good. They don't need a degree. Yeah. So they can prove it, uh, mm -hmm. but because they've got the experience elsewhere, they didn't get it in Finland. They get it in different countries. For example, in Russia or whatever, in the U.S., in Belgium, whatever you can think of. Mm -hmm. uh, so you need to have a degree because this is what uh, Finnish people, Finnish companies will look at. Mm -hmm. If you work for in business, then I, I've been in business. I've been in sales for the last five years. I've been selling AI stuff. Uh, I just put a link on on this chatbot uh, chat box thing. So uh, mm -hmm. you guys check this company called Get Jenny. So they build a AI chatbots. I've been applying for a job there. And what's happening in, in the business world in Finland is if you want to be with startups, it's not a problem. There are tons of startups, there are tons of jobs, a lot of low paid jobs. If you're really yeah. good, then you can job. Um, otherwise, if you have a degree, then you can start this journey in, uh, in a larger company, not in startups, because startups, I mean, honestly, they fail most of the time. So I've been with startups, uh, five startups, three of them failed. So just mm. think about it. Uh, and nine out of 10 will fail anyways. I mean, when you think about startups. So having a degree, definitely uh, a great step forward. And at the same time, take whatever courses you can think of. For example, yeah. now I'm taking this AI stuff and at the same time I have a lot of other things going on. It's definitely something that you can catalyze on. As you go, you can. this is the way you prove that you have the knowledge. Yeah. Of course, we don't have any practical sessions here, so we don't code anything, but it's not the point. 
at least you can talk about AI stuff. You can, you can, you know, uh, express yourself. Uh, if somebody starts talking about it, you can always say, hey, you know what? I had a, an introductory course, so uh, maybe I can, you know, look at it a bit more closely and then maybe start coding or uh, learn from somewhere or, or someone. So definitely, definitely, this is a great opportunity for us. And uh, just look up and what else is out there in Metropolia. There's tons of online courses uh, that you can take in your own time. Uh, not, not like we're having now, so we have to be present, but something that is 100% nonstop. You can just join anytime and then drop off anytime as you wish. So there's tons of opportunities and for those who want to, who are ready for it. Because yeah. a lot of people think that, oh, you know, we'll get some kind of jobs. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, if you want to have a good job, you better be prepared. Exactly. It's so much competition. I, I mean, there's a lot of competition. I couldn't agree. But all the best. You. Thank you. Very Thank good. You. Excellent. Excellent points, Anton. Thanks. Thanks very much. I was just trying to scare, you know, uh, Pandey, but you kind of relaxed him also. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so good, good point. Especially this, this last thing, which, which, which Pandey, uh, which, uh, which, uh, which Anton is saying, the competition is very very tight so you have to really think about it and in that you just want to ensure that you don't spend all of your time in doing degrees and not having the practical hands-on skills that is the exactly. same sentiment anton has has uh, has expressed so uh, we are on we are on same page and thanks thanks anton for for jumping in and uh, uh, sharing your your thoughts with with us so so when you are on this on this uh, on this uh, this page for module uh, four uh, what is next for ai so i have uh, collected some um, different viewpoints here for you guys to uh, read in your in your in your in your own time uh, these are top people of course in the in the field ai the, uh, kevin's uh, perspective on ai on jobs uh, you guys were referring to big data a couple of times in uh, both of last sessions uh, this is Mark Segar, Oscar-winning AI engineer. Uh, what they are talking about is he's combining human uh, physiology and artificial intelligence, and you know, emotionally responsive avatar. All those type of uh, things are quite uh, quite interesting. Um, yes, uh, <clears throat> this one, for example. Uh, get get Jenny. Yes, we can argue that you know it is pretty easy to to make uh, chatbots and those type of things, but there are some challenges in in chatbots which people have not yet yet solved. So what I was trying to say is that if people like Pandey can work on those challenges and uh, try to improve what chatbots can can do, and that is just one example. There are so many other things which are which are coming which will improve customer service. If we can do something like that, but definitely uh, these type of sites uh, are very, 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 very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, okay, so please look into these. Um, uh, look into these type of these type of these type of things. Um, expert opinion is there. Um, try to reflect on on that. Uh, for example, I can open one of them just for you to look. Look. So Yoshua is AI will follow for much more personalized medicine. Yeah, uh, it is going to allow that very personalized. Uh, even they are working on personalized medicine, uh, the ingredients of medicine and all those type of things. So these are short, short things. These are not long. Yeah, very short to the point, and published by by IBM. Yeah. Uh, some people are referring to these courses on edX and these type of things. Uh, well, this is introductory AI course. This is this is something very similar to what you will buy on edX, which you are especially this module one. Uh, that is all the things you if you do uh, a basic introductory course from edX or any other any other website. This is what they will be going through uh, with 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 you guys. Okay, future future with AI. Let's watch this one and let's see what it What does AI have in store for us in the future? 
my crystal ball is a little cloudy, uh, so I don't know if I have a, 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 a very a prediction that I would bet money on. What I do know is uh, what we have seen is uh, the way AI has progressed. It starts uh, fairly slowly, but then it gains steam exponentially. One good example is uh, uh, you know, DeepMind uh, put the system together that won uh, in the game of Go. It's a, it's a 2,500 year old game, uh, which won against a human opponent. Uh, but what's most amazing is while the first system was able to outdo uh, 2,500 years of human history in the game, the second generation of that system was able to outplay the first generation of the system in less than one year. And it only took about 40 hours of training for it to be able to achieve that level of proficiency in that game. And it won 100 games out of 100. So what we do know is the, 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 the pace of uh, which this technology is accelerating is just breathtaking. And it's not something we can predict very well. So. Uh, if there, if it was one prediction I were to make, it's it's going to get faster, it's going to get better, it's going to get cheaper, and it is going to happen very very rapidly, you know, within a very short period. It's going to be an interesting world. It's going to evolve very rapidly because these technologies not only uh, can perform tasks that we've never seen automated before, but learn as they do them and continue to improve. So what we'll see is we'll deploy systems. And every year, they'll get incrementally better at the tasks they're trying to do. So we won't have to drive our own cars anymore. Hopefully, we won't have to put away our own dishes. You know, there'll be a lot of simple things in our lives that become automated and become uh, eliminated from our daily task list. Um, it's a revolution that we've been through before. You know, the first washing machines, the first uh, dishwashers, et cetera. All these things have helped us, um, uh, you know, enriched our lives and simplified the way we live. And, and increased our comfort. And I think we'll see many more uh, such uh, uh, evolutions as we, as we watch the AI world unfold. Particularly in healthcare, I think we'll see faster recovery times, we'll see better patient outcomes, we'll, we'll see people spending less money and time in hospitals and in, in various care centers. Um, AI has been game changing for for healthcare. So much information that we can take out of out of a, a particular system and apply it to another. Uh, we can build all sorts of, all sorts of models that that have been you know that can be hugely beneficial uh, to to you know long term care. Um, so that's uh, you know, that's something that I'm very excited about and seeing that evolve. Uh, looking into the crystal ball, I'm always apprehensive to make. Uh long-term predictions, but um, my hope is that we are able to uh, indeed deploy these collaborative robotic systems, including self-driving cars, uh, to make people's lives better. That's the idea, uh, is to use AI and robotics technology to improve the quality of life for uh, the whole spectrum of society. So I would, uh, I would be hopeful, I would be looking forward to a future in which AI plays a central role in in freeing us from the dull, the mundane, the dirty, the dangerous jobs, and uh, hopefully providing us with more time uh, to spend with our families, uh, better health, uh, potentially better health care through through data analysis. And so I think um, if, if I envision the, the future that I hope will, will come to pass in uh, in a number of years, we'll be we'll be really leveraging these technologies to to make our lives better and to free ourselves from, from uh, dull, dirty, dangerous work. Yes, please, uh, please, guys, reflect on reflect on this 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 advice. Uh, these are these are top people in their in their field. They really know what they are they are talking about. Uh, so. Uh, Think about think about this thing, um, especially the first first guy. What he was he was saying that you know the the AI uh, just 40 hours of training and it got as competent as the as the other guy who had years of experience. 40 hours of training, 40 hours. Yeah. So think about that. So that is why you want to be very selective. What skills you want to want to develop.
and uh, and see different and the uh, and the and the uh, and the thing is that everyone would would be speaking from their context and from their experiences and so you have to be really open about it uh, when you are in AI type of debates. Never take anything personal or anything. just like just like a just like a while ago. So I I feel that there is no need of you know a second degree in the if you are you have done one bachelor's why you want to do a next bachelor's that is the way I think yeah. But then Anton came and he said no we want to we want to do it well very good nothing is wrong in that uh, never take things things you know personal this is going to happen all the time especially especially let me let me emphasize on that let me let me emphasize on that let me emphasize on that because when you will be working with smart people who are intelligent who think who have their own way of doing things when you are going to say something they are going to challenge you they are going to say well maybe we should do this maybe so so you have to be you have to be open to that if you really want to go in somewhere especially in uh, in business environment even if you are not going into technology or something and you are you want to work with smart people people will have really 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 different opinion and uh, you can't really say this this way of doing thing is right and this way of doing things are right because it is very contextualized what is true in in jamaica is not true in in finland what is true in finland is not true in india uh, the dynamics of the country are very different same thing is going to happen even when ai has advanced how the same ethical code can apply for all the countries in the world <laughs> that is that is that is a challenge it someone really have to think about maybe some basic things can can they can say all right everyone is going to uh, at least follow that but uh, the the context uh, is is uh, is critical generally in life and also in these things which which we are uh, trying to trying to talk uh, trying to talk about okay so uh, please reflect on the things which he which the guy said um, I have posted some reading here in your own time. Please, uh, please go through, go through that. Uh, pretty basic, but it it gives you some ideas. Um, this is an example, AI led example. You can go through, go through that. Uh, advice for a career in AI. I think it can it can help help you guys in thinking wherever. Depending on uh, if you have already thought about what you really want to do, then that is very good. But if you are Maybe thinking what are different options. These type of advice can can maybe maybe help. So these clips you are going to watch in your in your own time. A lot of advice is there. I'm just going to watch one clip with you guys. There are four or five, so I'm going to do this one. <laughs> So what advice would you give to someone who's looking to get into a career in AI? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I had a bit of an unusual route uh, becoming um, a data scientist or an AI specialist uh, myself. Uh, I have a background in psychology. So um, when I was studying, I was basically thinking of continuing to do academic research, not going to industry. But at some point in time, I had a realization that I didn't really want to become a professor. Um, don't really want to teach or do research in an academic setting. Um, so I started looking for jobs and it was it was quite difficult because um, what we see today is you know sometimes what you learn in university doesn't translate directly into what companies want. So how do you bridge that gap exactly? For me, when I was at the time still in Tokan, um, I didn't have a lot of resources around me, well, English speaking resources at the time where I could develop my skills. So I looked towards online courses, and online courses helped me you know, practice Python, practice R, my uh, data analysis skills through programming. And um, I was able to develop a foundation in the skill set that was highly sought after by many different companies. Um, and then from there, um, the question became, OK, now I have these skills, these newly developed skills through these courses that I've taken online. How do I translate that to something that I can show and demonstrate to potential employers? So then the next problem I had to deal with was, well, how do, I, how do I demonstrate that some way? So I created a portfolio of different online uh, assignments, exercises, projects 
to demonstrate that I could do, you know, the kinds of things that they were hoping that I could do to show my competency. I also, when I came back to Toronto, Canada, I started doing meetups to teach at these meetups, teach R, teach Python, teach uh, data science, um, to again further demonstrate my competency so that people could really see that I could do what I was claiming that I could do, um, which was a little bit difficult because people would just look at my resume and just see, oh, you have a background in psychology. What does that have to do with you know, data science or AI? So it was hard in that sense. That I had to overcome that, that burden of, of uh, proof. Um, so, um, oh, and, and the final uh, piece of advice that I would give is connect with fellow uh, local AI specialists. So whether they're data scientists, um, you know, a specialist in a particular field of AI, uh, machine learning researchers, uh, data engineers, just to get a better sense of what kind of AI specialists you might be interested in coming. Because today there's so many different kinds of AI specialists. You could be very technical. You could be doing uh, research on you know, the latest state-of-the-art algorithms. Or you could be doing something a bit more business-oriented, like trying to optimize revenue, um, maybe some reporting as well, uh, trying to find ways to pers personalize a particular service to each and every kind of user that you might have. Uh, there's different aspects of AI, and I think it's really important to have some clarity into what kind of role and what kind of job you want. And the first step to do that is to be able to reach and ask questions to people who are already in the field. And it's a great way to, to get a sense and also maybe even form um, some connections that might be meaningful in your career as well. So those are the four things. Number one is you know, acquire skills wherever you can. Always be uh, open to learning new things and new skills. Number two is demonstrate your capabilities through projects, exercises, something that you can share online, even blog posts and articles. Number three, if you can, uh, teach meetups or maybe even more ideally conferences so you can demonstrate your competencies uh, in public. And then number four is going to be uh, try to connect with uh, local experts or local specialists who are already in the field so you can get a better sense of what that career kind of roadmap might like uh, for you. Very interesting comments, uh, I think, uh, and hope that you would uh, find it useful even if you are at a higher level in, in AI, the things you do. This I found very interesting, and then you guys also mentioned, uh, one, of, one of you mentioned uh, somewhere in the, in the discussion about dream and interpreting dream and AI. Can the internet dream of itself? Please watch this in your, in your own time. Uh, many times uh, people are people are saying that uh, if you are hiring uh, hiring human beings, uh, they would need rest. They would want for increase in uh, pay, better environment, nice culture, all of those perks, raise in salary, all of those things. And uh, technologies might not want those type of those type of those type of things. Uh, and one of the thing is that human beings would need rest uh and uh, and maybe you know <laughs> uh, technologies don't don't need rest think about that that was a side note i had here um but anyways um anton has given us his uh, his two cents for how we should prepare for the future of work what are the things we should do and um, he's absolutely right uh uh, I stand corrected that yes, in some countries there is, it is a must to have a degree or something. But uh, what I was trying to say essentially is that don't go for degree, uh, go for skill set and experience, and that is the same sentiment Anton also mentioned. So we are good with that. Uh, but outside of that, any other any other commentary you guys can give on that, uh, how to prepare for future of work technology driven what are the things we can do uh, anyone has something to say for that please arjun has uh, raised his hand i don't know if it is from the past or from the past okay yeah okay no problem Okay, so please think about this this question, and I am going to take you on that uh, shortly. Uh, there are some other clips which I have uh, I have posted. For example, 
um, you're going to go through module summary in your own time. There are uh, just a kind of main pointers from from this this section. You can go through that in your in your own time. In your own time, please let me share the screen again. Okay, so as you are seeing on the screen now, um, I'm going to take you through um, this this one. Artificial intelligence, where are we now? Um, we really need to have some understanding of that. So um, read, can AI read? Yes, it can. It can read and it can even summarize documents. Can AI write? Yes, it can write. Uh, many news agencies are taking services from AI and so on. When I will be showing you uh, the examples in, I think, tomorrow or maybe day after tomorrow, uh, in that I will cover, uh, I will show you the examples how AI can write. See, yes, facial recognition, hear and understand, yes, of course. Speak, you know that, Alexa. Smell, uh, I'm not sure if you know about that or not. AI researchers are developing systems that will use odors to detect illnesses. Yeah, that is quite, quite interesting. Quite interesting. Yeah. Yeah, smell, artificial intelligence, ability to smell. And uh, although it says are developing systems, so that kind of gives you sense that it is work in progress. Yes, it is work in progress, but a lot of advancement has already happened for example perfume industry perfume industry right now is being disrupted by ai because they are using ai intelligence to make perfumes which has all to do with the smelling so please read on that if you are interested touch touch yeah that's very interesting understanding emotion yeah Especially in the if you are because I'm interested in um, consumer service, customer uh, engagement uh, in business. So from there, I have read a lot of articles which which, which establish that uh, yes, that thing is that thing is there. Uh, let me tell you one story at least. So for example, there are places, there are uh, there are shops in. Uh, in uh, in USA, where where they use artificial intelligence. So you come in a shop. So yes, they have facial recognition. So they have recognized your face, and you go to the counter and you ask for something. Do you have white shirt? You do you have a, a blue blazer? Do you have white shoes? Uh, and uh, they are going to tell you what they have and what they don't have. And let's say they don't have white shoes in stock. Okay, so next time when you will come in that shop the facial recognition will recognize you uh, that uh, they, will, they will recognize your your feature and when you will go to the counter uh, the, the 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 counter person would know in the system that you came when you came what you asked for and that thing is in stock and uh, you can remind the person that last time you came uh, uh, this this you asked and we have it so so that is facial recognition yeah uh, other things like uh, like uh, which is linked with this for example you will go to the go to the and these things are happening now i am not talking about future so please understand that so you will uh, you just run your search right now go on google run searches using the keyword you will find the articles so uh, uh, what was the next one? Yes, you go to the go to the counter and you uh, you ask for perfume, let's say. And uh, of course, when we are buying perfumes, we test a couple of perfumes and then we decide which one we want. So, based on your your preference, which one you liked, and because there is a conversation there with the with the person, you they give you one perfume, you try it, you say you. They say, do you like it? You tell it. You tell, you tell them, oh, it. I like it, but it is a bit strong, or it is like this, or it has a woody smell, or it has. I or you tell them you like rose in it, and all of that conversation is, of course, with the help of AI. They can say, all right, show this customer these perfumes. 
this is the same thing which established uh, reps do when you go in the in a nice perfume shop because they are listening to you they know all the perfumes they know the scents so they are at giving you advice but that is human being giving advice which is which is which is which, which we are familiar with in all different uh, categories in business but this one is ai related that ai will give advice and uh, and it is going to uh, tell you other things very fascinating things for example once you have selected the perfume and you go out and uh, uh, of course like the like the perfume that is why you bought it so when next time you will come in that shop that fragrance of that perfume would be sprayed by the automated uh, sprays in the in the shop and you will you will enjoy that smell again and in your memory it will trigger that that uh, that experience and especially if you like the 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 perfume your tendency to buy it again is going to increase but these are exciting things which which uh, which are ha happening uh, create yes creation is happening creating art creating uh, creating music creating poetry of course it is not at the level where where uh, maybe human beings can but it is it is it is controversial topic some people think that it is it is creating uh, good stuff some people think that it is not at par with what human beings uh, can create but think about it even in human beings not not all can create equally well poetry not all can create equally well music and so on so you need to think about that read your mind i uh, uh, oh yes roni very good poetry is a, is a same with the music and art it is yes it is very sub, uh, it is it depends on the person who is who is going to but then there are some pieces of music which are what i read thanks for that comment because it, it helps me to clarify what i wanted to say what i wanted to say is that there are some musics or music some music which is equally uh, liked by a lot of people and it becomes you know uh, top music or some artists uh, they become global globally recognized that type of thing uh, just like some beauty beauty we can say beauty is very you know some people like some people will like my face and they would want to fall in love with me other people are going to just look at me and hate my facial you know whatever so that is that is just so my beauty is not of a level which would be recognized all over the world wherever i will go in certain parts i will be admired in other parts i will not be admired yes that is how it is based on my traveling and my experiences <laughs> so uh, so 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 what i meant is that the universal beauty universal music universal so ai is going to work uh, work uh, work um, on 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 that so uh, quite exciting exciting thing so going coming back to the site uh, before we take barnes ai documentary uh, now these documentaries are carefully selected they are long 40 minutes something like that uh, but they are must watch so please find time to watch them no matter where you are and don't think that you are you are like uh, you are advanced in ai and we are talking about basics please don't think that uh, you are i promise you you are going to learn uh, many things as you as you watch and if you don't you can write me an email that i did not learn anything and then i will send you other clips <laughs> where, where i will ensure that that you you learn something new yeah so so think and this series i really love this series in the age of ai it is a eight part documentary series yeah exceptional they talk about like they don't leave anything uncovered uh, and very nicely done i'm sure you are familiar with this with this with this face famous famous actor uh, he is conducting this this show it is it is very interesting so uh, instead of watching any 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 movie or when in your downtime uh, you please uh, look look it up um, healed through ai um using ai to build a better human uh yeah uh, this is my favorite i love it uh, love art and stories 
if you are not going to watch all of them i would say at least watch this one uh, but just like uh, just like ronnie said everyone has their own taste so you can you can first play the one because they are independent it is not you have to watch first to watch the second one so you can see which one you uh, are close to so for example will a robot take my job what type of jobs it will take what it will not those type of things and some ideas insights how we should prepare for future of work and so on you are going to uh, get that uh, algorithm you guys are referring to those type of things every now and then um, yeah so please uh, please see if you can um, go through go through these things uh, so please guys make some comments on the overall uh, stuff which we have done so far essentially the key question is that how we should uh, prepare for future of work what what we can do all of those things if anyone can uh, can comment on that then i will i will conclude it yes barnes please go ahead uh, i would like to i would like to just uh, say that it is also interesting to think like how the AI would uh, read or write or understand or feel, because uh, if we go to the to the very deep level, uh, then then they are like electrical impulses, and now our brain is interpreted somehow. So let's let's think about it this way: that is my blue, your blue, like. I look at something and I see blue and I call it blue and you look at it and you call it blue but do we see the same thing so with this and we talk about almost identical DNA creatures so the same code the same structure of the brain or but <laughs> so whatever AI is uh, seeing it see it own way and mm, it's really hard to grasp what actually it means even blue because I can't tell. I personally don't know what you experience. We put some labels and we kind of divided the world into sections and subsections and and we learn to call it like that, but we don't really know if we actually see it the same way. Uh, it's a kind of funny thing to think about. But and the other thing I was I was also listening. It was very interesting to to hear from you about uh, the jobs, looking for jobs and and or in, improving in some areas. I I personally spent ten years in IT from the technical side, and I can see how the the field is changing. And um, I know people who have been in IT twenty years, and you would think like maybe uh, okay that person probably is uh, really advanced but actually no it it's very easy to to go into some uh, very narrow path and be an expert but being completely unaware of what is going on around and and i think these courses uh, you mentioned about like online courses there is like plenty of them and i really recommend udemy.com uh, uh, it's it's brilliant courses from many many different areas and uh, I I think the degree it's it's kind of really interesting times when I graduated degree really mattered uh, if I was hiring someone now if I had my own company I wouldn't look at it at all because I saw many people with degree who were brilliant and who were not brilliant and I saw many brilliant people without degree as well and i think it it really is changing and i think the whole education will be changed and i'm also very curious to hear more about this china uh, approach to learning we it was mentioned in the first day but i would like to hear more maybe there would be a time i don't know if today or tomorrow but today yeah that was tomorrow tomorrow, that, tomorrow. that's all yeah from my side tomorrow yes excellent excellent commentary so but you this this is this is thanks very much uh barnes uh, uh you read my mind and you said the things which i wanted to say but uh, um 
I, I stopped myself and I did not go into that debate uh, too much. But uh, thank you very much for making this, this comment and this, this balance the situation. But now, now we need to be balanced about it. So personally speaking, if you ask me, I am, I am thinking the way Barnes is thinking. Absolutely. Even a little than how Barnes is thinking. But what Anton said is also equally true. Because in some circumstances, you really need a degree also. Yeah. In some circ circumstances. So we are not saying that what, what the way Anton has given to the situation, that is also in some circ circumstances, that is, that is true. But, but my heart is going more towards what Barnes is saying. That's right. Uh, and uh, that is based on my circumstances, my experiences, and all of those. But Anton has established that in Finland specifically, Finland specific. Yes, Anton, go ahead. So in Finland specifically, you will definitely need a need a degree. So he had made that point. Yes, please. Yeah, maybe I can elaborate on this. So what I meant is that to get started in the field, you need to have a degree, because think about uh, employee or employer perspective. So if they see you as somebody who haven't, uh, who has, who haven't been doing anything in this field, so you're just a fresh uh, graduate, they, they need to have a proof that you can do the job. Meaning that you need to have a portfolio somewhere, you need to have your whatever, whatever you've done somewhere online, so they can really go and look it up in GitHub or whatever you can think of. If you have a second job, third job, whatever, job number ten, you have enough experience. You don't have to have any degree any longer. So basically, when I was selling when I was selling this, I said that those people they got the experience elsewhere, not in Finland, so they could prove that they've done this job somewhere else. But if you get started as as really somebody new, you better have a degree or some other way to show that you are capable of doing it. That's what I that's what I meant. Excellent point. So in other words, Anton is also saying the same thing like Barnes and and me that degree is is don't think about degree. It is about your skill set. Can you do it or not? You have to demonstrate that. So one way is demonstrating it through degree, and another way is demonstrating through some project, some work experience. So yes, definitely you have. So now you have to see in which way. In, let me tell you one one more thing. My field is what is my field? I never told you that. Where where do I work? I work in future of higher education, future of future of universities. That is where, where I came into artificial intelligence and whatever. So my thing is what the how the degrees should how degrees should prepare people uh, to work in the in the in the future to be employed. Uh, what are, what should be the curriculum like? How should we what should we teach? All of that thing. So I have looked at uh, around the world. I had uh, 50 plus interviews with top people who are managing top universities uh, for my research. And from all of that, I am what I gathered from all of that. If you want me to sum it up in one line or two, universities are not preparing the people to work in the in the real life. So from that angle, I am saying that if you are just doing uh, 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 a degree where you are not get, getting any experience or hands-on work, just like Anton has established that 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 thing is very important, then it can be can be challenged. But you can. There is not, no, nothing binding. We are just sharing, you know, we are all friends. Anton, Barnes, me, we are just, this is, this, is, this is a friendly type of atmosphere we are trying to create here. So you have heard these two, three different varying point of view, a little bit variation. You have heard Arjun also. So you can decide now how you want to take and what works for you and what does not. In Jamaica, we say uh, different, different strokes for different folks. Yeah, different strokes for different folks. So, so you can you can think about that. Anyways, any other idea uh, which you want to give, uh, or I am going to go ahead. Okay, no problem. We have we have you have uh, um, we have we have uh, we have established a couple of things, but you can now um, you can now decide how what you're going to do. I'm going to uh, show uh, a clip here, uh, which is excellent, if you ask me. And that will conclude uh, this module, and then we go to the next one.
please uh, listen carefully. In the next 10 years, there are a few jobs that will disappear. Insurance underwriters, bank tellers, financial analysts, construction workers, farmers, and taxi drivers. Who knows what else? All this is because of the artificial intelligence revolution that is happening right now. This is also the first time in US history when the next generation will be less prosperous than their parents. This worries me because I have three teenagers in the house. What do I get them to do to prepare for this unknown future? Some parents want their children to become doctors, some lawyers, some accountants, and some engineers. All this when we don't even know what opportunity will exist in the future. So here's my thinking. All teens have some interest. It may be sports or music or math, or biology or medicine. Let's just say one of my teens, Ishwar, is interested in math. On this novice to expert line, he's likely to fall somewhere in this range. It'll be great if he's so good that he's on the top 1% of math professionals in the world, but the chances of that is going to be pretty slim, purely from a statistical point of view. On the other hand, say Ishwar is also interested in music. Now we're getting somewhere. Along the music axis, he may not be the world's best, but let's say he's pretty good. Then he falls somewhere in here. Combining the two, his math and music expertise is pretty good. Only a smaller set of people in the world will have that combination. Now let's say Ishwar is a passionate gardener and he likes to understand how plants grow. He may or may not have taken formal botany classes, but he's pretty good at gardening. On a third axis, we'll find even fewer experts in math, music, and botany. As the number of dimensions increase, his chances to stand out increases. The artificial intelligence systems will take a while to catch up to this level of expertise. Currently, most AI systems focus on a single area of expertise, like playing chess or like recognizing faces. I think it'll be 50 to 70 years before we can build strong AI systems, those that can do many more things. So Ishwar can stay ahead of the AI by using a combination of expertise. This also helps to focus on all his passions and interests at the same time. So let's see where Ishwar can work. Perhaps he'll work in an entirely new field that has not been invented yet, or he'll work in the field of hydroponics which is a science of growing plants without soil. He can use his love for gardening, use his math skills for optimizing the processes, and his interest in music to explore if plants grow healthier in a musical environment. This combination is challenging even for strong AI. And it's going to be what I call the realm of creative AI. At least this is my theory. To prepare for the future with AI, we need to let our children pursue their passions and interests. We just have to make sure that they have a handful of those and some unique combination of these will place them at a competitive advantage compared to artificial intelligence. As always, I would like to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching. Yes, guys, what are your, what are your thoughts? Any thoughts, any ideas as we just watch this exciting, uh, Exciting clip. Please look into the chat section also so you don't miss any important point. For example, last one was Ronnie. Online portfolio. Yes, of course. Uh, demonstrating your skill set in any format. Uh, that is the that is the key. So please think about this, these pointers which are made in the in the in the uh, that is the same type of thing I was trying to say to Arjun also that um, he he has business background so from there he can what are the things he can combine and uh, create a create a personalized standing for yes he's raising his hand yes Arjun please go ahead uh, 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 sorry uh, are you, can you hear me clearly very clearly 
All I right. can yeah. see you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, after watching uh, watching this video, uh, w one of the query came in my mind. Like, for example, when there was an industrial uh, revolution, uh, maybe in that generation, uh, they thought like now the future is like uh, engineering and all of their, uh, maybe the parents were uh, strongly advocating uh, to, to their children to study maybe engineering and go to the physics background or whatever the field is. Uh, do you think like you know uh, now the AI is uh, um, rapidly developing now the focus of the this dynamics of the parents they, they want every children to do computer programming coding and uh, how, what do you think the ship will be go on, on go, go on this direction and uh, if there is like uh, too much push uh, for this you know um, coding environment or the computer thing uh, uh, children might lose their creativity, you know, the, uh, the, uh, all those things they, they like to do, the pa their passion might be uh, skewed because of this um, overwhelming uh, technological revolution. I did, just a thought came in my mind, I wanted to share. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have yeah, anything can happen. Um, but yes, definitely we will have to incorporate more and more technology. So the more understanding anyone can develop, the better for them. Uh, that is at least uh, people should, you know, they, they should they should think about this and based on their, you know, if let's say that there is someone who is not good in math, yeah. is, is their life over? Exactly. Is, exactly. That is it for them. They cannot be useful for AI. So that is what I was saying that if if you don't want to do maths, that is don't do it. Well, if you do it, you that's very good because then you can work in the field hands on, uh, like doing some algorithm. But if, if that is not for you, then well, yes, Jonas is saying we have we have calculators. Yes. So, so see, this is this is the point. This is the point. Thanks, Jonas, for that. So there was a there was a time when people would 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 study two times two is four two times. Um, what is two times four? <laughs> yeah, two, uh, uh, two times uh, two, <laughs> two times uh, ten is twenty. They will memorize these things. Yes. So, yeah. so, so, uh, so, so. You know the the. Uh, now you don't need to. Uh, it is good if you do. That is good. But uh, you can see that uh, I'm kind of forgetting those things because I'm using calculators. Same thing for for phone numbers. Phone numbers. Yeah. Do you remember the phone numbers of people? Yes, some people you would remember very close ones if you are dialing. But otherwise, it is all the contacts are there. You would not want to memorize those type of things. So same thing is for with the AI. So so uh, but Barnes has made great comments. Anton has made great comments. All the comments are fine. Uh, different approaches for different people. Uh, just what, what the 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 main you know all of us are trying to say the same thing it is the same thing it is not much of a difference uh as i want to conclude this what i want to say is do whatever you want to do but don't waste time in that because you know degrees take a lot of time and uh, as barnes was saying you learn something now it might be redundant in next three years, four years. Some other thing would be not redundant, redundant, but knowledge does not get redundant. But it's it's quite tricky, and especially in coming in in developing countries, this is a this is a bigger challenge maybe. But I have seen now now I have seen developed countries also. Uh, before coming, you guys, I was in other countries in 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 Europe uh, giving different not AI related courses but other courses business related courses and uh, they are quite good universities but uh, you know the the curriculum is uh, is is not as advanced as it should be the books are they are reading old books the new material has there uh, for example 3d i was doing production related courses and 3d printing has uh, has evolved that that thing and we are still learning about older calculations and stuff like that so so those things really bother me um so because 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 i wasted some of my my time in all of that thing uh it was not really waste but if i were more more aware or better guided i might have done things faster without going into unnecessarily 
unnecessarily education related degrees uh, but anyways um, these things these things happen so please think about these things very good and i'm very thankful for the pointers our friends made uh, this discussion would not have been possible without the without the commentary of anton and barnes so i really thank thank you and ronnie of course and other people who were uh, putting uh, information in chat uh, please combine all of this knowledge look at these videos talk with your mentors look at your surroundings what are the requirements in the job market which country you want to work in all of those things you need to think about and uh, start uh, start working at that. Uh, that is that is what uh, so with this uh, so with this we are we are closing our first uh, first section in the in the course which is which was ai for everyone master the basic so this one if you if you will do any 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 basic course of ai introductory course on udemy or any of those websites you will see this similar type of information which which you saw on these on these clips as a matter of fact many of the clips especially the ibm related clips they are coming from uh, one of the one of the sites ibm training i'm forgetting the name of the name of those courses okay next thing we want to talk about is ai and uh, and europe yeah so without wasting any time i'm going to jump into video please watch it the most cutting edge thing about hannes Huerblad isn't the phone in his hand it's the microchip actually in his hand the tiny implant is the latest advance in a biohacking technology that is steadily becoming a part of normal life in Sweden. We have created a new implant, which is not a chip, it's a full device where you can add different lights, different uh, vibration, different functions. Sweden is a very tech literate society. And I think this is the main explanation really why a lot of Swedes are uh, adopting chip implants. Swedes haven't been shy about upgrading themselves with the new version. Thousands already have microchip implants that they use in their daily lives. Waving their hand to gain entrance to the gym, confirm their ID or make payments. A short moment of pain, not putting them off, becoming part Swede, part machine. This event is an implant party where ordinary people can show up and get a microchip embedded under their skin. The biohacking movement in Sweden is hosting them all over Europe, but it's at home where they get the most willing recipients. I think it's really cool. You don't have to carry any keys or anything. It's just your body. In maybe 10 years, everything will be in your hand. In Sweden, more than anywhere else, the future is already here. The national train the SCA has around 2,600 people signed up to use microchips instead of train tickets. And no need to mind the generation gap. 18-year-old Felicia and father Magnus still bear the scars of their new implants. Student Hannah Herving is also freshly chipped and now just needs to program it to open doors. Although importantly for a future career, it does already connect to her LinkedIn. Some people say I'm mad that, um, I don't know if it's safe and all that, but people have been putting these chips into animals for 20 years. So I'm not worried about that. The long-term goal is for the new chips to help provide medical care in remote communities. They're already getting under the skin of the Swedes. They may soon become just another normal part of modern life and of the human body. Paul Rees, Al Jazeera, Lund, Sweden. Yes, guys, what are your comments? Anything you would want to say, please discuss. What did you see in this in this clip? Are there anyone in our session who are wearing any uh, any any chips, any uh, any implant chip in their body? Or we have do we have anyone here? 
who has that so it's a country nearby sweden it is near near to you and they are doing these type of things there so what are what do you think about this would you want to do it what can be some of the benefits of this what can be some of the <laughs> some of the <laughs> Uh, Ronnie, I thought you would want to do it, but but it's okay. So, what are some of the benefits? What can be some of the challenges in this? Please talk about it, guys. Uh, uh, please, yes, Abu. Please go ahead. Um, I think because this uh, now the data uh, storage system is not so good, and we cannot store so many information over there, and and uh, the benefit is not that much good yet like still it's like working as nfc i i can put my nfc chip in in some my phone cover or some other in my back cover or or something but uh but still it's not that there yet i think if there has been some improving things and then we can store more data then why not but some basic things definitely can be done like and it can be quite beneficial like you won't won't forget where your keys are or you won't have to carry cards and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Then, yes. then it's okay. Yeah, so for example, library card or something, you forget it and they, do, they are not letting you in the, in, the, in the library or stuff like that. But it is quite, this is the start, you know, that's not, it has been happening for a, for a while now, but, but many people don't know about these things also, like they are not familiar with these type of, these type of things so but what 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 why you guys would not want to uh do this what would stop you you guys are you know you guys are from computer sciences and you 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 are into this ai and all of these things so why why you would not want to do that anyone if someone at least couple of people if they can comment it would uh, Okay, Thang is saying privacy. Okay, all right, privacy. But uh, that thing is already compromised. Uh, we are on internet. Um, right now we are, we don't know who else is watching us. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, and you know, we, we, uh, yeah, so this is, this is very interesting. This is where the, where eventually, eventually um, countries are going to uh, go towards that especially these modern data data driven type of countries di digitized countries that is what i must say and many of them are already doing it uh, some some people in um, are voluntary volunteering to um, to do these type of you know experiments and stuff like that it's quite interesting uh, but but think about it someone was saying that uh, uh, you know they some um, now people will not steal uh, don't mind my comment i'm just sharing what what someone someone said that they said they won't steal your your like uh, your uh, your your card or something they are just going to take your hand away like that and then do something the thieves and those criminal people yeah so that was again you know i uh, but i'm sure they will they will do something like you know <laughs> uh, it's quite quite a few thoughts are coming in my mind but uh, but this this is this is quite quite interesting where the where the world is is going Implant, implantation different type of implement implantation uh like language and, and uh, this is more like sky fi also some some of the things which i read in, in research paper they are also they also seem kind of sky fi also like uh doing something with the chip and brain that your your ability to understand a new new um, new language increases uh but definitely they are going to be people who are going into these things they 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 are they are um, their head is also going to get upset they will get messed up head messed up thoughts um, that is why yesterday we were saying that you know we, we want to remain uh, remain human human like 
but think think about think about this uh let me show you one more one more clip and then maybe you guys do some some commentary so this is the next country estonia We already know that we need to create quickly the legal space so that technology feels comfortable here. For example, in Estonia, you can see on the streets uh, package delivery robots. Mm -hmm. They work here. Our people are currently learning how to live in the world where uh, some of us are people, some of us are cars, and some of us are robots, which is a hugely valuable lesson. In the rest of the developed world, people rely on digitalized services in the private sector. In Estonia, this is also true for the government. 99% of our services are delivered online. We have given our people digital passports, digital IDs, and they can use it for all kinds of services. Estonia might be a tiny country, but it's doing big things when it comes to bringing technology and government into lockstep. And they're calling it E Estonia. One and two. And one and two. You're good. You think so? Yeah, you're natural. All right, one sentence. What is E Estonia? I think it's an ecosystem where private and public sector both work together to provide these complex services for the people. You need both sectors to work together. It can't be only private sector at all, and only government. Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> so that sounds like the theory, right? Which no, it's like it's a practical thing. Do you know how many tax lawyers are in Estonia? How many? <laughs> or we can do internet voting. Like that. We basically solve internet voting. Yeah, voting over the internet. Huh. They can show you like how can I attract my children at school. Here's an app. You can see my son here against the class uh, and like, top five, so not bad. And this is like a public school, like yeah, everyone. It's public, in it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's mandatory. Every school has to have a system. Since the day Soviet space program, Estonia has been a tech hub. And since their independence in 1991, technology has been baked into its institutions, especially education. <laughs> In lots of Estonian schools, there are 3D printers. Really? Just to print out, this is easy. There are lots of designs, but they have to design by themselves something. Mm -hmm. and this is to be a creator, not only consumer. So these kids designed the shapes on a computer and now they're watching the shapes be printed on a 3D printer. This is an education that, frankly, it's hard not to be a little jealous of. They're even thinking about the bigger implications of algorithms and autonomous robots. Martin Kavetz is the country's digital advisor. We're the first country in the world that can operate our whole sovereignty from the cloud. In case of occupation, we run it from Luxembourg. Wow. So if you look at Estonia and the digital society we have built, most fundamental innovations are not technological, but they are legal innovation. Mm -hmm. The idea that the digital identity is mandatory for all people, the idea that the digital signature is equal to the paper one, these are very simple, robust legal innovations. The secret to Estonia's future-proofing is the database of personal information the government safeguards. At birth, the government issues every citizen a unique ID number. But unlike a social security number, Estonians don't mind if theirs is made public. So we're at a delivery store in Estonia where newborns are immediately plugged into the digital society as soon as they're born. <laughs> Have you guys picked out a name? Steven. Steven. Hi. Thank you, Steven. 
So this is the ID number right here. This is yeah. Stephen's number yeah. for life. Yeah. yeah. There it is. And then that gets uploaded to the government database immediately? Yes. Wow. Add newborn here. Right there, boom. Add yes. newborn. So you just hit a plus button and that's how you add a person to the country. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's so funny. It's hard to say if USNs would trust their government with all their secrets. But to Estonia's leadership, data is the future of personal identity. And so the basic role of government must shift to ensure data safety as much as physical safety. All governments say we protect the data you have uh, given to us, yet how they guarantee it. So if somebody from police is looking into my data, I will be notified and I can query why they did it. Really? Yes. And that guarantees me that I really, really truly own my data. This is the way the uh, digital, transparent and honest state works. Yes, guys, very exciting stuff. What are your comments on, on this on this clip? They are doing package deliveries on the road, on the road, in the snow, robots. 3D printing, uh, kids doing 3D printing. Uh, did we get a chance to do 3D printing in, in our school? I did not. <laughs> and I'm, I'm pretty sure that in school you also did not get that that get get that uh, that uh, that privilege 3d printing Th think about that what what can be some of the and one point i really i really like that so i want you to make note of that uh, the guy was saying most innovations are not technological most innovations are not technological they are legal legal matters yeah legal ethical those type of things but anyways, please go ahead. Anyone, couple of people can make some comments on the on the clip. Uh, what do they take from this clip and the last clip? Uh, are there any things which we should keep in mind uh, moving forward? Uh, anything on that? Yes, Abu, please go ahead. Uh, I think this uh, voting over internet uh, is is very good idea because uh, I have been. I, I think. Last time only I, I was able to give vote because uh, like sometimes I, I feel like in Finland it, it is like that one week long you can uh, buy, post by vote or like by parcel also or or by envelope also and this kind of thing so we, we sometimes forget or we sometimes think okay we'll do it later and later and then yeah. we never go there but if it was digitalized I think participation will be very uh, very much high so I'm really in it and this also this uh, robots in the Australian del delivery system i think that's that's also a good idea and uh, then then uh, the post post office will be uh, service will be much, much better because i think nowadays it's happened like we have to wait until like two three days to arrive some postal service so then it will be much higher i think ai will help us to go in that future and I think voting over internet, it can be start right now. But I think our political system is uh, run by some old people. They are still think that uh, manual system is much more better. But if it is, uh, if it is to give our own generation, I think this daylight saving things and this voting over internet will be demolished soon, I guess. Thanks. Thanks very much, Abu, for the for the for the committee yeah, yes dimitri please go ahead welcome uh hi um, let, let me share my video yeah you can hear yeah. me probably loud and clear good, to, good uh, to have you for the for the first time welcome we appreciate it yeah thank you i've been listening only and now like to, to make a comment uh basically the whole system uh we we saw uh on this video is based on the of course uh, based on the legal uh, matters but it, it is based on on the trust uh, that people do trust uh, their governments uh, government uh, will not uh, steal their information and as president of Estonia said in the last word uh, any citizen will get uh, an, an update or uh, kind of a notification that, that their uh, their system has been our their data has been checked so this is uh, strictly based on the trust and 
do we trust governments enough to give all our data to them? That's the question. Of course, we are uh, trusting our data to Google and, and everybody else. But again, do we trust our uh, our government uh, that that database, uh, database, for example, will not be stolen or sold to somebody who want to 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 do something uh, to this data, something evil or something good? We don't know. But again, uh, it is all uh, based on the trust. And then again, and another uh, comment on the previous one, and maybe on this uh, video as well. Here in Finland, uh, I'm a father of uh, two children, uh, and they are in the school age. And uh, recently, they implemented uh, a new curriculum, a school okay. cur curriculum nation uh, nationwide, I mean. And uh, the main point uh, for this curriculum is the school is not there to teach subjects. Of course, uh, subjects are, are still there, but the school is there to, to, to teach how to learn. And that's, I think, is a key point uh, in the whole studying system. And uh, if we, we'll, if we'll, um, in my opinion, I mean, uh, history is making another circle. If we're thinking about the, previous uh, century, start of the previous century. And if we are thinking about uh, steam engines, they were a threat to a people. People were very afraid of them. And they were thinking they are, uh, they, they're gonna lose uh, their job. Of course, a lot of horse races have, uh, have uh, lost their jobs. But again, steam engine helped uh, the thing and they kind of uh, multiplied the whole process. Uh, now, uh, whenever you needed hundreds of people to, to make fields, for example, now you need uh, one tractor only to make a field. And now one, uh, one human being can do hundreds of fields uh, or thousands of fields. So I think this IA conversation is kind of repeating the same stuff. We, uh, uh, IA will not overtake. Uh, our jobs, we are programming them, but uh, we need to learn how to program them. So my point is, the future is the education. You have to educate yourself to overcome I. Excellent. That's my point. Excellent. Thank Thanks. you very much. You, very much. You, uh, you have really nailed it. We, we are very thankful for, for the commentary, uh, Dimitri. Very nice. Thank you very much. Two points I want to talk about from Dimitri all of the points were very nice two I want to really talk about uh, number one how to learn how to learn and if you that is he's saying in Finland new curriculum and they are focusing on that how to learn and if you would have realized in our sessions also we are focusing on the same thing for example I am asking you guys that how should we prepare for the future of future of work what are the things we should do all of that debate where Barnes was giving his point of view, Anton was giving his point of view, I was giving my point of view. What is that? That is how to learn, how to get ready, how to prepare. Yeah. So I'm very happy that we are doing something similar, which which Finland's new curriculum is trying to focus on. And 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 even more importantly, the, the first point which uh, which uh, Dimitri mentioned that is so close to my heart. Uh, I think about it all the time. The role of trust, the role of trust, the role of trust, how to create a trustworthy worthy, uh, environment for, uh, for AI to function. Uh, he spoke about uh, political systems. Uh, if someone can create some, some, uh, some things for political leaders that uh, why, 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 why this trustworthiness is a different type of trustworthiness is important for the future where we want to incorporate technologies and all of the, those things i think that would be that would be uh, very important because ai is not ai is things are linked things are linked with economy of the countries are linked with the culture of the country things are linked with uh, with the political system of the country so if you look at uh, look at the look at the political political the politics of the country is going to determine the laws, the regulations, how to do various things. And AI is just one of them. So if we don't trust our government with the 
with the data and AI and all of these technologies are dependent on, on data, then how these things are going to happen? Then definitely some countries are going to get ahead. Countries like Estonia, they are going to get ahead. And there will be some other countries which will be left behind. And then the distance is just going to grow and grow. Before we know, it will just be too much that it will be very hard to catch up. Yeah. So these are some things which you might want to think about. Yeah. And uh, um, another thing in which you cannot go wrong, based on my understanding, is that if you if you work in data security you can't go wrong with that that field also because there will be need of securing data all the time so that is another thing which you can think about anyone else want to make some comments on um, these two exciting clips we watch first one was sweden chips installed another one was uh, uh, Estonia, how they are doing things. Any comments? Lee Dimitri made comments. No one else have anything to say. Yes, Anton, please go ahead. Uh, I think Anton is not about to uh, take his uh, moment. So I would like to say about Estonia yes. that uh, I'm originally from Poland, and Estonia okay. has a little bit, little bit similar uh, history. So uh, it is interesting that Estonia was not really high tech, and to me uh, also it is a, like really great example of a little country that um, put put effort to the, to this technology and they are like skype for example was uh, that was the estonian also uh, application um, at the first place but uh, i think it is possible to be behind as a nation and still um, develop to 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 compete with the, even the the biggest countries we would say so estonia is very small but but yeah. they they focus on on people and and that's great and i i hope there will be more estonias <laughs> all around yes thanks very much barnes for the for the for the comment yeah please think about these things um, because although you guys are in europe if you are not looking into these things then uh, then you might not be aware of what is happening in sweden and fin uh, and uh, and you might not even be aware what are some of the exciting things people businesses are doing even in your own country in finland so please keep an eye on these type of uh, uh, many startups startups are doing these type of interesting things also um, in ai so please uh, see how much you can read and whatever you can do okay so there are quite a few readings for for this AI um, AI Europe. So uh, this is where we are AI and Europe. When you click this, this will open. So before you before you jump into AI and Europe, it is good to have uh, some broader understanding of what is the global context of AI. So for that, I have included these these four or five readings for you guys as you are. Um, Thing on the screen so in, in your own time you are going to go through this read these readings and all the readings on on this on this page for example this one the artificial intelligence industry and global challenges this article really really gives you a very nice insight into what are some of the global challenges in in ai these type of maps national strategies and action plan in ai it, it gives you a chance to 
uh, to see what are the what are different things different countries are are doing uh, on this yeah so this information i think is is very help, helpful israel i have mentioned a couple of times that they are in technology they are doing quite a quite a, quite a few things so for example this the israeli company was bought by intel for 15 billion and is just one of the example of a thriving ecosystem in israel 15 billion yeah uh, so now you need to go ahead and and, and mobilize mobilize the, yeah so please read about this company and this is just one of the example they are the 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 readings are full of examples and you need to you need to data is a competitive advantage we have been talking about this so you need to think about think about these things and please scan through these uh, these articles as much as you as you can it is just a pity that time is a challenge for us and we cannot discuss them one by one uh, but uh, if you will read these things in a short period of time you will get a decent understanding by because this article is very nice where does europe stand in the global ai arms race you need to really understand that only then you will be able to appreciate or not appreciate maybe able to able to empath uh, able to understand why why china is doing what they are doing because shortly maybe today or tomorrow we will start talking about china uh, so otherwise coming from a democratic country it will be hard for you to hard for you to understand you will say why china is doing that they should not do this thing they should not do that thing that is not you know that's not nice uh, but uh, but uh, this is how it is uh, it's coming from the same point which barnes made and then ronnie commented on it yesterday that uh, and then i gave you a little story in the end of the session that uh, the once you once you miss the train you you kind of miss it and the countries don't don't want to miss it uh, so this type of this type of initial understanding i think it is going to it's a very nice article it then links it with ethical framework we have spoken about these things but uh, 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 but uh, you know uh, you need to you need to read it and then digest it and then maybe maybe tomorrow or day after tomorrow you can you can talk about whatever whatever what's happening in the in the chat just giving shameless finnish company advertisement <laughs> similar <laughs> why they are, why they are shameless <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Forecasting the business value of artificial intelligence worldwide. This type of reading is, is I think, is is uh, is helpful. So, for example, um, let's look at some some numbers from this. AI business value growth will slow from 2018 through 25, dropping from a peak of 70 percent to 7 percent by 2025. Yeah, this is a report by Gartner. 2017. So you need to understand that why they are why they are saying this. What is the what is the rational rational for for this? These type of charts give you a little bit of understanding what is happening in the in the field of field of AI. This type of trend, uh, this type of this kind of forecast. Like this is how it is going to grow business value and within business. What are the what are the main things where you might want to invest your your time in. Uh, okay, look at this one. Like for example, this one. So this, these these readings are full of interesting um, data. In 2020, AI will become a positive net job motivator, creating 2.3 million jobs, creating 2.3 million jobs and eliminating 1.8 million jobs. So there is a sentiment. Uh, I don't know how you guys think because we never spoke about it, but generally based on my experience, the sentiment is that uh, more, a lot of jobs are lost and all of that, but more jobs will be created than the number of jobs lost. That is what at least the data, uh, at least the forecast predicts that. A major, 
major forecasting companies. Gartner is one of them. Uh, other ones are Deloitte, KPMG, PwC, E and Y. These type of established companies, which have global reach, they have done their studies on this, and there is a consensus on that that the jobs created will be more than uh, more than what would be eliminated. Uh, different world 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 economic forum for example uh, united nation these type of uh, big organizations they have done surveys and they have done projections and they you can you can just run a google search top 10 skills key skills to have in uh, in 2025 and you will see the see the forecasting and let me link it with what dimitri said dimitri made a very nice point about curriculum new curriculum development in finland and he's saying that the essential thing they want to teach they don't want to teach you the course and there is no need i 100 percent agree with with uh, with finnish strategy that is excellent and i think the world need to adopt similar thinking that why you are why you are teaching the the students what what you what you want to want them to learn they, there is no point of teaching uh, people what you have in your head that is redundant that model is redundant now you need to teach them how to learn on their own how to find information how to distinguish between the correct information and the wrong information that is where it is but our university is teaching that no they are not will do they have planned to teach them this in coming years no based on my research no the majority of them if there are two or three that is a, that is an outlier there is an there is, that is an exception we are talking about in general sense they are not teaching so you you should have the ability to learn on your own if you have that that is the education so think think about that only then you can you only then you can be useful in the in the in the world where we don't know what what type of jobs would be would be there but definitely we know this one thing that more jobs will be created than the jobs jobs which are which are lost um, look at this in 2021 ai augmentation will generate 2.9 trillion uh, in business value and over 6.2 billion hours of worker productivity 6.2 billion hours of worker productivity what does that mean you can work less hours and gain more from that yeah all of that debate that you know less less working hours and you should you would have more hours extra uh, what you would do with that time basic pay without working all of these concepts are there different countries are working on these type of things but of course that will take a lot of time that will take a lot of time maybe and not all countries would be able to do that very few countries would be able to do that so these type of readings you need to you need to see uh, uh, how artificial intelligence is transforming the world very interesting examples are here uh, look into this section policy regulation and ethical issues i think uh, because all of these things uh, about uh, estonia finland changing curriculum in finland there is a leadership on the top which is deciding that we need to do this we need to do that there is someone in finland who thought that all right we need to change the curriculum although they finland is known for best education in the in the world yeah Finland is is not some country which where education system is in a bad shape. Still, people are thinking how how to improve it. Times are changing. Let's do something else. Change the curriculum. How to change it? What are what is the new thing to implement? Well, implement how to learn on your own. You have all the data. You have all the information. You will have internet. That will change everything. That will change how we evaluate evaluate. Uh, Dimitri's uh, children how will they be evaluated how will be the exam like is it something which they will have to memorize and come in the exam and write it down from memory are you testing someone's memory well if you are making someone with good memory then of course you can't compete they, they cannot compete with AI because AI, AI has better memory you can't compete in that domain 
So if you are memorizing things and reproducing that those things in exam, those times are gone. But majority of the countries in, in the world, majority of the universities, even the top ones, what are they doing? Yeah. So a lot needs to be done. There is a in any field, what I'm trying to say that in any field you will go from any dimension you will go in ai you will be you will be success if you spend good time and work with right people it's not just about technology even in ai there are so many other things so many other dimensions uh, but i think i have established that throughout our three days artificial intelligence will disrupt the future of work are we ready are we ready so you can ask that question yourself and then very nice statistics are there it is comparing us giving you some information about us because this first section is about global context so in ai and europe before you study europe you need to develop some global context so look into these and then let's quickly scan through ai and europe yeah so please uh, um, look into this so for example this one how ai is advancing across the world map yeah uh, us what are they doing this is going to give you some highlights about that uh, for example recently announced an investment of 2 billion to build the next generation ai and that is that is that is that is dabra yeah and dabra is defense advanced research project agency and they are doing exciting things. I will show you the examples in my PowerPoint presentation, I think tomorrow or on the last day, where I have examples. They are making jets, unmanned jets, fighter jets, uh, run by AI, no human being inside. And that jet is, has the ability and has eaten the jets, uh, aircraft I'm talking about, uh, fighter aircraft. Um, so AI powered, uh, fighter aircraft beats uh, human powered <laughs> human humanly human human humanly running uh, uh, the 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 aircraft run by uh, the jet fighter uh, run by human being AI is beating that so this look at this two billion why they are why why US is spending this money on this they are already super powered they have the best uh, they have the best uh, of the of the of the ammunition. They are number one in the world. The technologies they have in warfare, no other country has it. Yeah. But so why why they are doing? Why they are investing in AI? Yeah. So they want to keep their dominance. That is why they are doing this. Yeah. So U.S. and then and I'm not to say these things. Whatever I am saying is not. We are not saying anything against U.S. Very good. They should do it. If they well, they they need to do it. Otherwise, other countries are there. They are working on it also. So they they won't remain superpowers. UK, you know. So for, look at this, for example, distinctive characteristic. What is distinctive characteristic? Lead in ethical AI. Leading ethical AI. So European countries, as I mentioned, they are looking at ethics should we do it should we not do it should we do this should we not do this we should do this we should not do this so when you are in that type of mode you don't end up doing the real work but this is important it is not that ethics is of course very important we have established that in our sessions it's very important but now it is up to the countries US, what US want to do? US, you saw two billion dollar investment in warfare, and that is the one which they disclose. Countries don't disclose the real amount; they just give you one figure, and then there's a real figure which they really spent on these things. Because there are, there are, there are, there are in these in the budgets of these top countries, they put extra money. Which, which they, which the, which the leadership or the government agencies can spend on anything, whichever they feel that they should invest in, without reporting. So it is a secret fund, also. Yeah. 
so you don't report that so think about these things so every country would have their own uh, own you know which where they want to work in and then they will they will they will they would want so this look at this lead in ethical ai not just uh, not just do ethical not just work in ethics lead in ethical ai so for you also what what i meant that you can go in ai by any field any any area but in whichever area you select then you want to be leader in that you want, whatever it is yeah so that is that is very important france lead in ecological ai yeah ecology yeah, you guys were talking about sustainability environment and those type of things so so every country would have their own agenda and then you can see that what are this is a nice map to look at but i think you need to look into these things and uh, and see what what is what is what uh, look at this goal to dominate the ai world by 2030 dominate the ai world they are not saying ecology they are not saying ethics they are not saying warfare they are not saying education they are saying AI world, whatever AI, wherever AI is, we're going to dominate the AI world by 2030. That is why they are just capturing data, capturing data, capturing data. Yeah. And their political system support it. They don't have a democracy. And the thing is wrong with not having democracy. They are working fine absolutely fine they managed covid 19 better than the democratic world <laughs> yeah so through a potent mix of capability capacity and strategy yeah very nice very nice 114 billion pounds 114 billion pounds for the core ai industry take a moment to you know digest the, <laughs> the type of investments and this is this is amazing please go through go through these type of readings uh, this is i love this one artificial intelligence strategies a uh, very nice action plan overview of national ai strategies no matter which country you are coming from you can uh, should be able to especially the 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 uh, the more known countries and those they are that information is very nicely collected uh, in here so you would want to uh, so barnes for example he mentioned poland so you might want to see what poland what is happening in poland and same for other friends. They, 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 it's a nice, nice website, nice place to see what is happening overall. Uh, harnessing artificial intelligence. I really like this one for for Europe. When I was reading it, I learned a lot uh, about what are the things. It is, it is basic. It is basic, but still you learn a couple of things from this. They give you a context of, for example, uh, this. Chinese company Beidou, uh, they are using AI, AlphaGo. You guys mentioned it, I think, yesterday or something. But it kind of give good context and a and a viewpoint of why what is happening, whatever is happening, why it is happening, all of that. Um, elements of AI, talent, talent development. How are you going to develop talent, either through certification or degrees or experience or building portfolio? data we have been speaking about hardware of course hardware and you know you guys in your reflection you guys have been talking about the about the processing speed of computers uh, uh, quantum stuff you guys have been talking about i'm very happy about that some friends send me some long reflection on that i really enjoyed that uh, cpu capacity and those type of things uh, very nice that you guys are thinking about that also. That is very important, especially if you want to do, you know, um, hardcore programming and stuff like that. You need to see what is happening there. Uh, but then I, this, this is the main competition: U.S., uh, China, and then Europe collectively. So 
even in within europe the you know but then data 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 thing is very different for example i was in in, in i was conducting online session in germany the data is uh, the handling of data is very different for them uh, they are kind of formal uh, although they let me do whatever i wanted to do and they did not bother me much but uh, but still they have their own uh, their own uh, style uh, on the other hand then i conducted uh, just last week i finished uh, with uh, with spain they are very different they are kind of laid back at least what i saw they are okay with that and they they did not uh, they let me do whatever whatever i wanted to do with the uh, with with the data related stuff and uh, finland is is different yeah so uh, all of that is europe but uh, look at that totally different totally different experience totally different the the culture is different the way of sessions is different engagement is different commentary is different style is different everything is different so if then in in ai also this these things are going to reflect because human beings are going to work on ai so all of this going to this is very interesting ai in europe key issues what are the key issues so i encourage you to please uh, go through this and try to understand and you don't need to master everything to be honest you just pick up the domain which you like which you enjoy and start reading over it and over a period of time you will develop your your uh, understanding improve data collection data sharing on european level you know that is that is that is what i was referring to a while ago if german style is different and spanish style is different then the data sharing will you will have to really sit down and think to come into some conclusion uh, because both countries based on my experience uh, they have different style different outlook towards data uh, even the even people awareness is very different the 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 the, the participant in german their awareness on data production was was a little bit higher than uh, the awareness of friends in uh, in spain yeah uh, same in in jamaica in my sessions the awareness is is very is very different uh, so could you tell a little bit more what are the differences like um in a scale if you could put it on the scale how how would you describe it a little bit more I'm, I'm very curious about how the europe is different from your point of view because i think it is mixed a continent uh, but because i'm i'm from here uh, yeah. i would like to hear like how when you conduct the sessions how different the sessions are what is the uh, your observation about it yes 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 definitely i'm going to i'm going to talk about it because you asked but let me continue with the uh, with the uh, with this this one at least increase investment and smarter and spend smarter yeah europe spent 4 billion on ai research in 2016 but china spent 7 billion think about this i'm highlighting it europe collectively 4 billion on ai and china 7 billion yeah we need to think about think about these things yeah and then other other numbers are numbers are there so so please scan through scan through this state of the art and future of ai yeah this is european parliament european parliament yeah so this type of reading is really uh, really really you know uh gives you a very nice context what is happening collectively in europe yeah of course there are different countries no one is saying that europe is, is, a, is, a, is a is a country yeah but please think about think about think about this these things which you will you will you will read definitely what i'm trying to say is commentary coming from political leadership parliaments and stuff like that that is very important uh, for us to reflect on this one i really liked machine learning and ai in europe very interesting so these are the major things which they are to talking about so for example what trends offer opportunities on the european market for machine learning 
and uh, AI AI service the trends which are happening you guys were giving very nice examples in I think the first session about machine learning and what it can do and what it cannot do so those type of things in the context of political leadership they are they discuss that what competition do you face on the European machine learning and AI AI market? Yeah, you would want to reflect on because in Europe you would see that uh, uh, there are many startups which are labeled as AI. They are labeled as AI startup, AI startup, but uh, they are not necessarily doing any tangible work in AI. They are just naming or pitching their startup by using these type of technologies which can help them attract uh, funding many many <laughs> startups are doing it like this also uh, so please what i'm trying to say please go ahead and do these readings uh, then i have this ai in switzerland ai in poland ai in sweden so all these countries they make their own um, this one, for example, let's talk briefly about about this one, uh, just to see if there is some some interest. In so look at this. Switzerland is 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 one of the advanced country, but PwC is reporting that Switzerland lags behind global com competitors. If you're going to compete globally, then although Switzerland is quite advanced, but they are lagging behind. If you are looking at global competition, so this this is giving you very nice numbers, figures. So please, it's a short one, just two page. Uh, as a matter of fact, it is just one page. Other things are just you know, uh, just there. And this is done by um, uh, like CEOs. CEOs were asked some questions. You can see the details in the in what questions were asked and reflect reflect on that. AI in 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 Poland. Uh, what are the things they are doing doing there? So what I'm trying to say that these countries, uh, the major ones at least, spend some time in reading what are the things they are doing, what are the government policies, where, what are the things they, what are the what are the things uh, they these which countries pushing what. Uh, that type of information, I think, is very important. Uh, artificial intelligence in Swedish business and society. I we, we saw one clip there, but there are so many other things which are which are worth uh, reflecting on. So please, I am saying it again. Please spend some time in going through these these reports. Um, after scanning through a lot of reports, hundreds and hundreds. Uh, we selected these ones to go on the website so please see what what you can what you can do with with them okay AI in Belgium same way um, very nice numbers and, and stuff so for example, turnover reached over 43.2 billion in 2018. Yeah. So a lot of investments are, are happening. You want to understand in which areas they are investing and uh, in which area they 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 want to uh, dominate. Every country has its own strategy. Every country has its own way of doing things. So please. Uh, Reflect on that. AI strategies and public sector components, for example. This is again very, very interesting. Public sector, private sector, government bodies. Um, they have different type of different type of and this one I selected because this is this is from OECD. Yeah. I hope you are familiar with the with the organization. Uh, it's a quite elaborate, uh, elaborate report. Yeah, and it is it is available. Artificial intelligence and its use in the in the public sector. You don't have to pay for it. Yeah, so it is. Don't have to read all of it, but it is worth scanning scanning through. 
at least uh, these type of document so look at this uk government government website they have posted this a guide to use ai in the public sector yeah so if you are using ai in so for example one of our friends mentioned that uh, i think uh, ronnie mentioned it in the chat that uh, it would be very uh, helpful to uh, it would be very lucrative helpful uh, if someone can understand uh, where to invest when to invest how to invest in ai field that type of comment ronnie made in the in the chat when i was scanning through so if you want to go in that that sector then these type of guides are there which are going to help you yeah so please uh, look into look into that overall state of ai in europe uh, these type of uh, these type of ventures also do conferencing so i think it would be good idea to attend instead of doing a basic course uh, in uh, in ai i think that going to a conference in ai on ai which, which are many in europe especially and you guys can travel you don't need visa and stuff like that so it would be very interesting to go in these type of conferences and listen to what are the things which they are talking about i think that is better than doing a a short course or something like that and this is the situation let me because i'm not uh, i'm just showing you the clip and not talking about any one of them so let me at least talk about one of them so let's talk about this uh, deloitte central europe cfo survey 2019 yeah the finding discussed in this report opinion of 674 cfos chief financial officer of officers and these are the countries let's quickly scan through uh, one or two findings Seventy-three percent of the CFOs believe this is not a good time for companies to take on more risk. You and me might say in our discussion that yes, we should try out new things, experiment with AI and what it can do and other technologies. But seventy-three percent of the CFOs, chief financial officers, who are going to say yes to uh, some financial investment of the company or no. uh because this is they 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 are you have to take them on board because they are responsible about the financial situation of the of the of the company 73% believe this is not a good time for companies to take on more risk so you need to go in, in depth now and try to understand why do they why why 73% believe that that it is not it is not uh, a good time look at this one appropriate technical knowledge 57% and work experience 55% are the two skills that are hardest for companies to find these companies which are looking for ai related talent 57% are saying technical knowledge is hardest to find and 55% are saying work experience that is what we were referring to when anton was making the point and arnes was making the point and i was making the point about work experience and all of those things that is key look at this 80% uh, you are looking where the where the cursor is cursor is moving unfortunately i cannot highlight this for you so look at the cursor movement uh or look at the top of the screen now it is top of the screen 80% of cfo says say they make little or no use of ai in managerial process 80% we are talking about central europe 80% so 80% are saying that they make little or no use of ai in managerial managerial process and 
Look at this last one now. 32% of CFO believe that technology will displace people working in the finance function in 10 years. 32% of these are CFOs. These are not like ordinary people. They are managing the financial health of the companies. 32%. One third. One in every three believe that technology will displace people working in finance function in 10 years. Yeah. So even if it does not happen in 10 years, what about 15 years? What about 17 years? So if someone wants to study um, MBA in finance, what should be the curriculum like? So this way you're going to go through these. Uh, this is Stanford University Advancing AI Research Education Policy and Practice to Improve Human Condition. Very nice. Please read it in your own time. AI Index Report. This is very nice. AI index report it looks at all of the world uh, all the countries and then on an index it creates which countries are where what is the level of progress what is happening so you should look into these type of reports and uh, you can also look for your own country where is your country on this on this index yeah tracking you Euro gap in AI notes from the AI frontier tackling Europe's gap in digital and AI McKinsey's report 60 page yeah I read it I enjoyed it learned a lot uh, you should also read it yeah and similar type of reports what I'm trying to say that a lot of reports are there so if you will so I'm I've directed you to these ones and uh, you can follow these websites and stuff so it will not waste your time you won't have to start from scratch and uh, just in uh, if you these readings you can read them in two two days three days maximum if you are focusing on this in two two or three days of reading you will it will help you to understand what is happening in the industry uh, from these well well written well done reports and then you can decide or you can uh, focus on the areas which you are more more passionate passionate about let's talk a little bit about ethics uh, not really talk i just want to show you some 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 things so europe yeah ai artificial intelligence commission takes forward its work on ethical guidelines so these type of commentaries reports are going to help you how they are dealing with the uh, ethical issues what is to do what is not to do all of those things so for europe they have this commission and this is this is one of the reports high level expert group on artificial intelligence yeah and they are talking about ethic guidelines for trustworthy ai and please recall what dimitri dimitri said please recall what dimitri said trustworthiness trustworthiness development of that yeah so countries are working on uh, working on on that so but now the the real copy is, is here when i posted the draft was there so but please run for the for the final version and uh, you can you can read that uh, and the reason for putting putting draft version is that you look at the draft version and then you compare it with the final version and then you see how did they change the draft to the final so the things they added in the final version which were not in the draft they kind of highlight to you that i don't know how to say but but to me it kind of maybe gives me direction that these are these must be very important that, that they must be very important and they are not something which will come on the first thought. So in the first thought, whatever came was draft. And on the second thought, these things came and it must be important. That is why they added them. Maybe I want to focus on those things which were not in the first draft, but in the final they were. Because maybe many people are not thinking about that. Those things maybe come on second thought. That is how I think, but you can think the way. 
you want yeah so so please look into look into these type of things this clip one minute clip please watch it in your own time how can eu scale up artificial intelligence one minute clip but it makes a lot of sense last year i was uh, i think i told you that i was yes i did i did tell you i was in in europe last year uh, and uh, i went to uh, netherlands for for this this course artificial intelligence of course it was it was it did not have this much information as it was done differently uh, that time now i am doing it differently so over there i got chance to go on the, these business excursions on and off so one was rotterdam seaport and how they are using ai right now it is not like future approaches at that time not right now last year uh, what was happening and i have posted this link for you to look at the seaport very famous rotterdam seaport uh, so what are the things they they are doing this is kind of an introductory thing but run more searches and try to find out philips i got a chance to go there uh, to the company and uh, their top executive came there and they gave a talk i had a chance to speak with him ask questions and ask question to all of the staff a uh, very exciting trip i had uh, it was arranged by the university of course for all of us that was part of my course so they said that we are arranging this for for your course uh, to show hands on you know what are the things which are happening so i learned a lot in that in that philips made very nice context uh, i was asking those people how did they land in those type of jobs which background they are coming from and all the things which i am sharing with you they are inspired by those uh, they were talking about big data they were talking about ability to analyze data uh, they were talking about being open all of these ethical issues they were talking about uh they were talking and and of course the, that is given the languages and learning language and those that is given you you would want to do that anyways but there are so many other things which you might want to do and they are using ai in in uh, in in a lot of ways philips so uh, you and the link is there you can uh, run through that and the last one um, last year was volkswagen wagon and they are using a lot of ai uh, so we had the we, I did not go to all of all of them, but wherever I could go, I saw that uh, it was it was amazing. Yeah. So so this was this was AI and Europe. Uh, please uh, please make the please make some comments on the things which we have uh, discussed. Uh, um, so I can conclude AI and Europe and move on to AI and uh, and uh, and china yeah oh well i'm looking at the time <laughs> yes let's conclude ai and europe yes alice here uh, go ahead what are uh, the comments uh, no it's not a comment it's just a question about the course um, uh, we have to do these uh, reflections every night um, but also we have another reflection uh, which should be submitted on friday yes so, can we? So I think I'm doing it wrong. I'm doing the long reflection every day, <laughs> and or or what? Or should we pick a topic like you just said, like read this or check this video and think about it? Um, should we do a reflection about that for Friday and re make a short reflection every night? How? Yes. How... Yes. So actually, actually. Uh, um, I'm not sure why you why you brought in this question. We could have taken this question at the end of the session, but anyways, because you are bringing sorry, sorry. it up, no problem. So the, there is the, there are three parts of the of the session. Part one is uh, part one is um, no three areas in the evaluation. Part one is participation, which you guys are participating in the in the in the in the talks by uh, using your mic and video. So that is. That is participation, and the 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 part of that participation is that after every session, you are sending uh, a note. It can be long and it can be short. 
with uh, or it can be some links which you thought about what are what are your after thoughts after the session so you are doing that after every session and many friends are not doing it uh, you should do it otherwise it, it compromises your score i don't know why you are not doing that simple task so that was that is one but well, that is linked with participation so that is every day which is five days and then uh, it is number two is your 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 um, video um, so that is number two and number three is the is the final overall reflection uh, oh. of the um, of overall of overall understanding what is the way forward how are you going to deal with that that is what it is. so please read those uh, those things uh, carefully if you guys will read it and try to follow it i think it should be fine i i but, hope i answer your question alisa yes uh, but uh, for the video like you are showing very nice topics now about this ai in uh, in this different business and ethics and whatever I'm sorry for this, uh, but uh, can I like, pick one and then make a video about that? Uh, is it okay? Does it make sense? About about what? Uh, I don't know, like um, this. No, you are saying you pick one. You are saying pick one topic, Alicia. Yeah. Of course, you are going to pick one topic. It's a three-minute clip. But, <laughs> but uh, it's about uh, can we take these uh, links? That you are putting. Yes, you can do whatever. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. That is your. That is your thing on any topic related with AI. You can talk about coding. You can talk about uh, algorithms. You can okay. talk about Python, C plus plus. Even the things <laughs> we did not talk about. That's okay. okay. You just want to explain some concept in AI or the use of AI. Yeah. Oh, so right. it's not hard. Anything on okay. that. Can we send you video in? Uh, YouTube. So we send you the link only. Uh, please follow the instruction. They are oh, there, okay. and for format is there. Uh, right, you can also right. post on YouTube, but uh, it is the instructions are there. Please okay. read them and follow them. Yes. Now they ask him by Friday evening. I mean, they ask him people like when is the time is there, the day is there. You just need to read it. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Thank you. No more questions. <laughs> no problem. No problem. I am okay with this. No problem. But I I want to really talk about the 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 thing which we were discussing. So Alice okay. here, I'm going to talk with you now because you are okay. coming with these questions. So please please say what 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 are you taking away from this conversation about AI and uh, and Europe? Please tell us anything on. No, I'm I'm very excited. I mean there is. I feel like it's an overwhelming of, uh, of topics. We have talked about everything, education, the future of education and AI, what is education, how to become a data scientist, uh, how to get a job as a data scientist in, in, in Finland, how to get a job in Finland. I, I've been writing <laughs> so many notes and I like the, the idea I mean, first, I feel like uh, we are kind of driven to think like AI is 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 good, you know. Like I I, I see it, or I feel like I'm driven to towards that direction. Even though I'm a person a bit skeptical, I, I don't know if the technology will be really good or really bad. Just uh, I don't know, but I am not. I cannot be blind and and say, ah, oh, this will be the revolution. I will be a scientist and I will get money and fix and be part of it. I feel, uh, yeah, afraid, or I don't know. I wouldn't take it so easily. And I like the well. You are talking now about the strategies, and I was uh, checking one video from this guy Cedric Pilani, the mathematician in France, and it has uh, very interesting points because he is a, he got the field medal and uh, and now is participating in the parliament on the strategy of France to make it sustainable. So I was thinking to 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 go deeper into that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Then we talk about CFOs and opinions, and I don't know. I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. I cannot uh, synthesize. Yes, good yeah, one, right good now. one, good one. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, thank you, thank you very much, Alicia. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for contributing in the discussion. So you know this is don't uh, and I understand you know this this can be overwhelming. Uh, 
this can be but the but the but don't get overwhelmed at all because this information will be there you can always come back to the website this is an open website i don't i'm not going to close it after after friday or something like that you can always come there you can always send me links together we need to improve this type of website because this is for 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 any it's not my property it is it is as much as of your property as as my property uh, so <laughs> you can always send the links how to update it how to add information and over a period of time you can you can see what are the things which are which are posted because i also posted these things over a period of like let's say at least two years it is not that one day i just posted all of, all the things i've been looking at it reading posting something then taking out something then posting something then taking out something that was the that was the that was the that was the way and don't feel overwhelmed also because there is no exam. you are not being tested on this as anton explained it is just you know take part in the discussion say what you have to say and that that is what it is so what is how you are being evaluated you are coming to the session you are participating at the end of the session you are sending just a note it can be a brief note it does not have to be a long note then you are making a video of any concept can you explain any concept on ai what do you think about it it is a three minute clip there is no big deal in that and at the end of the course you just write a reflection how long is the reflection i'm asking you just 200 words i am asking you can write more if you want but i i'm okay with 200 words that is fine so don't feel overwhelmed you will be fine fine in that but yes but yes it 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 is it is it is overwhelming but uh, uh, don't get don't get don't get overwhelmed that is what what i can say but anyways although, anyway although i i have to say like um uh, something that comes uh, recurrently is uh, the comparison of ai with all technologies everybody is kind of comparing uh, because we don't know what it is in the end um, ai uh, everybody is thinking about the revolutions, agriculture revolution, when the washing machines arrive. And uh, it seems to be like everybody has the impression that we will be, we will have more time. But looking, looking now, we have less time actually for, for doing uh, nothing, for example. We have always have to do something. We have to work and we go to study and the children and so on. And I don't know how the technology really will give us more freedom. Um, so, so I hope so. I hope AI find a way to give us that freedom. Mm, definitely, definitely. Yeah. And and one more one more thing I want to say here is that uh, I am just trying to you know uh, create a little bit of hype also sometimes. So why do I do that? I do that so you you take this seriously and you start working on it. But of course you have time. It is not happening tomorrow or day after tomorrow <laughs> so you have you have time but but i don't want you to feel that you have time i want you to feel that you don't have time because you know we, we human beings procrastinate we procrastinate we create for the last moment so i don't want you guys to do that that is why i'm saying we we are like that type of commentary when i'm making but anyway, what, what what is what is what is the what are the thoughts? Any other person can say something about AI and uh, and Europe. What? Any examples? You guys are from Europe. Can you give some examples? What is happening in other countries? What have you seen? Build on the build on what 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 we said today. Any example you can share? How AI? How some countries using AI? Educate us. Enlighten us. Yes, Barnes, please go ahead. So, so I was just thinking that this, this new technology is uh, it's really touching so many areas. And that's why our discussion is so uh, vast, because it touches all kinds of aspects of the life. And um, it can be somehow like the feeling can be that uh, what we are actually talking about, because we talk about everything. But in the end, that's the point, to realize that this, this technology is is really touching everything and it will it will come more and more and more and soon we will wake up and it will be next to us we will fall asleep it will be next to us and 
at night it will also be with us and I don't know, I, I just put some thought about it, maybe before the course, I was always curious about these topics and and more I was looking at it, more I was realizing that, that it is really about to be everywhere and it's really hard even to explain because it's very abstract. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, but, I, to I totally agree with that, I totally agree that, with that, yes. But I think it's really good that we, we mention and talk about those aspects and and later on every one of us might refer to it later on and have a little bit more time to think about it. Um, with open mind, I think then then it, open mind. then it comes many ideas comes, what can happen and how it can be used and yeah. You know, yeah, very true. And this word open mind, that is very, that is very important. As a matter of fact, I was referring uh, to my visit to Philips in Netherlands and the guy over there, he was, he he's the one who told me this thing that uh, please emphasize on open mindedness. That is very important. Uh, broaden the exposure. So what I'm trying to do, but that is my, my thing is that I want to broaden it for you. So because all of us 20 people are here, all of us are going going to go in different directions. All of us are not going to work in any in, in one industry. We will go different places, different type of organization, different different ways. So so there is something for, for everyone or some new idea can come up when you are doing interdiscipline approach, you are using talking about different disciplines, then uh, I think it becomes a little bit more more interesting and fun. Or, or, or alternatively, I could just pick up one field and I would say, all right, I will talk about artificial intelligence in warfare. And I can do that, no problem. For 20 hours, one week, <laughs> no problem. Artificial intelligence in health, I can do that. Artificial intelligence in education, well, that is my, that is my main major, major, major area of focus, one of them. So, but then it would be it would be very it would be very different. So that is why we took took that approach. So, so think about that. Don't get overwhelmed. You are not being tested on on anything like define this and define that. Um, you are coming from computer science. Majority of you are coming from computer science backgrounds. So you already have a good knowledge of computer science and algorithms and languages and those type of things already. Okay. All right. Any other concluding uh, remark for AI in Europe before I take uh, take pending question of uh, of our friend Barnes? No thoughts. All right. So with that, uh, this is where we were. AI, AI and Europe. So we are concluding AI and Europe. And next thing we will start is tomorrow we are going to start AI and China and then application and then uh, we need to look into some examples that is that is the agenda.